Can you read a text for us? Sure. Daniel 6. I can't go up there. Can someone get this for him? Yeah, start hollering at me if I walk down. Daniel 6, 22. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, forasmuch as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Thank you. Do you ever feel that you're alone? Do you ever at times feel like you're alone? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you ever think you're alone doing something you shouldn't? And maybe you're not alone. Let me share. You're not alone in the warfare against wrong. Could the curtain be rolled back, you would see heavenly angels fighting with you. This they must do. It is their work to guard the youth. They are not, are they not all ministering spirits? That's interesting. It is used the word spirits. Do you think of your angel being a spirit? Well, there's terminology that talks about there's good spirits and there's bad spirits. Well, there's good angels and there's bad angels. So the word spirit can be synonymous with angel or angels. Are they... Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be their heirs of salvation? Ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands of thousands of angels minister to the youth. And I'm reading from um, um, Y.I. January 1, 1903. Youth instructor, January 1, 1903. And it's not just for our youth do they have angels we have angels but it's interesting as you as you look through here there's conditions at time we talked this morning about conditions um, can we send our angels away we can yes so how many of us have guardian angels these are questions I'd like to look at this morning how often do we think about them do you think about your angel very often how often do you think of Whatever name you've given him, Henry, George, Sam, whatever. Do you think about him being there with you? No, we don't. And he's right there. You know, <clears throat> what if you had the biggest and the strongest military person that there was? Would you feel more comfortable sometimes walking down a dark alley? Yeah, but you've got it even stronger than that. You've got an angel with you at all times. I'm trying to think how long ago it's been. It's been a number of years ago, probably about 11 years ago. Um, 11? No, it's been longer than that. Probably about 14 years ago. It was probably about 14 years ago. We got a fire call. And um, I had recently joined. We had moved, and I joined this fire department. And... Um, I got there. I was in Gatlinburg when the call went out, and so I had to respond. And um, it was our assistant chief's home that was on fire. I got there. The chief was at engine one. He was running the truck, and they had two lines pulled, a line on the Bravo side, which is the left side, and a line on the front side, which is the Alpha side. And I went to him. I said, Chief, what do you want me to do? And he said, pull a line to the Charlie side, which is the back side. I said, is all safe? Obviously, when you go on the fire scene, you do a 360 to make sure everything's, you know, what all's going on. Is anybody hanging out the windows? Or any, there's a propane tank back there we didn't know about, or whatever might be going on. Yes, everything's all safe on the Charlie side. Okay, so I pulled the line, 
And I walked across, pulling the line. And, uh, and so I'm getting ready to fight the fire, and I give him the, the okay to charge the line. Because you don't, want to char you don't want to pull a charged line, especially out of the truck, or you've got a big mess up in the truck. And then as you pull it, you pull a, a, a line that's not charged because it's a lot lighter. Yes? Yeah. And so I get there, I, it's extended, and I, and I wave to him, good, ready to start fighting fire from the outside. It, obviously, the structure was fully involved, and we could only do exterior attack. No water. No, no. It's good. And he's going. I start walking back over. And I hear this. Bzz, 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 and I look back. And my hose is burning. What? It was on a live line. So I went back to where he was. We didn't do anything. Pirate, just a, Within just a few minutes, the power company was there. And uh, they cut the power. And uh, so I go back over to the area. And I look. I'd walked over the line once. I'd walked over the line twice. It burnt a hole that big into the hose. That big. Now, the, it was only, at that time, we were using an inch and a half, not inch and three quarters. The hole, I mean, literally, there's a, I have it on my mantle at the house to remind me. And it, it's burnt like this. Or, or like that. The other thing that would have happened is if, see, he tried to pull the valve and it wouldn't open. It wouldn't open. And if he had charged the line and I would have had water flowing through there and literally I was standing here and the power line was about right here, it's a good chance it would have electrocuted me. It's a good chance it would have followed back and where he was pulling the valve that the water was flowing through, which is metal, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the valve is metal, and, and the pull piece is metal, he would have got electrocuted. What happened? I went back over to where he was trying to pull the, pull the, um, the, um, the discharge uh, valve, and it pulled right out. There was not a problem with it. What happened? Do you think it might have been my angel? Yes. yes, I believe it was. And I believe as I walked across it, my angel guided my foot. Twice I walked across that charge line. Why it wasn't buzzing, why it hadn't blown the fuse, I don't know. All I know is it burned a hole in the fire hose. That's this big. My boots are rubber. At that time, I was using rubber. I got leather now. But it was rubber, and there's a steel piece of metal down there. What would have happened? I don't know. But our angels are there to protect us. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs for salvation? Ten thousand times ten thousands, and thousands of thousands of angels minister to us. How often do we think about our angels? How often is he with us? And I say he because that's the word used to describe them. What does he do? Is there places that he does not go? How powerful how powerful is our guardian angel? He was alone in meditation upon the past. Now this is probably one of my most favorite quotes. This is interesting. He was alone in meditation upon the past, the present, and his future plans. His mighty frame shook as with a tempest, an angel from heaven was passing. Who was that? Lucifer. Lucifer. See, he, he was contemplating, and, and it's, this is from uh, SR Story of Redemption, page 26, paragraph 1, but it's also in the book Temperance. 
here he is trying to figure out, he's thinking about the past, the present, the future. He's really upset at God. He'd been kicked out of heaven. And what's he going to do? How's he going to get God back? Now, how do you, if somebody wants to get at you, what's the best way for someone to mess with you? Pardon? Mess with your kids. Mess with your kids and mama bear's upset. Yes? Papa bear's upset. Yes? You're going to protect your kids. That's the charge God has given you. Protect your family. We mean much more to God than our kids mean to us. I mean, it's just amazing that relationship God has with us. And what happened as he's thinking about this? Just one angel, just like any one of those angels that are in this room right now, our, our guardian angels, happened to fly past him. And what does it say? His mighty frame shook as with a tempest. That's how powerful your guardian angel is that's with you all the time. That your guardian angel can make Satan's mighty frame shake. Now, is that not exciting? That's exciting to me. That's huge. Who has a guardian angel? A guardian angel is appointed to every follower of Christ. Hmm. It's almost sounding conditional. But we'll see. There's other situations. A guardian angel is appointed. A mean one. A guardian angel is appointed to every follower of Christ. Every believer who constantly realizes his dependence on God has his appointed angel. Every believer who, conditional, who constantly realizes his dependence on God, has his appointed angel sent from heaven to minister to him. The ministry of these angels is especially essential now, for Satan is making his last desperate effort to secure the world. Is there ever times that Satan, the angels leave us? Yes, and we'll talk about that. What do they do? These, these heavenly watchers shield the righteousness from the power of the wicked one. These heavenly watchers, our angels, our guardian angels, shield the righteousness. I'm sorry, the righteous shield us, shield the righteous from the power of the wicked one. So, when our angel's not there, we are very susceptible. But our angel is there shielding us from Satan or Satan's angels. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Again, conditional. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Besides protecting us physically from Satan, what else do they do? Angels are sent from the heavenly courts not to destroy, but to watch over and guard imperiled souls, to save the lost, to bring the straying ones back to the fold. So it's not their job is not just to protect the righteous, but what else? Pardon? Those that may be straying. Yes. To save the lost, guard imperiled souls, and to bring the straying ones back to the fold. Can someone share an example of that? Can anyone share an example of yourself or someone that was challenged that Satan was there. Yes. To bring, uh, my, their angel was there to bring them away from Satan. You know, I speak about myself because I grew up in the church um, all my life pretty much. And of course, as a youth, you know, we do strange things and we stray away from what we believe. So I was out of the church for, for quite a while. And through the years as I was living 
the standards of the world, there was something in me that always spoke to me that says, now you know you shouldn't be doing these things. And as I was hanging around with you know friends of the world who didn't have the same belief and understanding, you tend to want to go in the direction that they're going in because that's your association at the time. And of course, I used to be into cars and motorcycles. And you know, when you're on a motorcycle, the first thing you want to do is see how fast you can go. And that was our thing. You know, we would ride as fast as we can to the top of the possible speed limit. And every time we would do that, just because it was a fun thing to do. And there was one time that I was riding, and I was really pushing my bike to its other limits and I think I was hitting about the 185th speed limit at that point and at that speed it doesn't take much for you to lose it because you're as light as the wind and anything can cause you to just completely lose it and there was something in me that says what are you doing right and I knew in my heart that at any time I could be killed at an instant but I always knew that my mother and father they would pray for me all the time because they knew they wanted me to come back to the church. And that voice was always there speaking to me saying, what you're doing is not right. And I knew that was my guardian angel. And I always thank God looking back at that. Hmm. Anyone else? All right, he's got a mic. It may be turned off in the back, though. Yeah, I think she turned it on. Um, is, are we talking about angel experiences? Yes. Okay. My dad was moving a barn, and I was a young kid, and he, it, it had, it was up on the beams and was went across the field, and then it was it was uh, trailered, uh, a jack uh, unhooked from the tractor. We're going to hook up to a tractor trailer to go down the highway. Anyway, it was unhooked there, um, and it was on a handyman jack, and I was looking over the handle, and I was wearing a ball cap. And I felt this pressure against my chest pushing me back. And a moment after I was pushed back, the jack slipped, the building came down, and the handle went way up into the air. But it hit my ball cap off on its way up. And had I not been pushed in the chest, I, and there was nobody standing around, of course, um, I praise God for my guardian angel. Absolutely. Anyone else that's happened to something? There's one back here. That's my son right there that just said that. So this is a little some to what the saying. We had at the farm, I had a battery, a big battery, tractor battery, sitting in the back of the truck, and I wanted to jump another tractor off. So I backed over to it, and I knew better than to touch the battery with it hooked up. And but I didn't. I reached over the side of the truck, and as soon as I hit that terminal, the battery went straight up in the air, like 40, 30, 40 feet, and then came down and just missed the truck. But it would have blown my arm off. If I'd have been any place else, it would have taken my shoulder and everything else off. So I know God, and on the farm, always works overtime. That's true. Anyone else? Yes. I got one, but I got the mic. It's, it's running in the family, you know. <laughs> so when I was 12, um, I got an Arabian horse, and it had to be trained. So I didn't know a lot about training, but I was doing my best, and um, Dad built us um, a big arena out behind our barn. And I was out there with this this very very frisky horse and I was riding it and she didn't like me much so we were riding around um, galloping I think and she bucked me off and it went up and over the side of the arena but it went head first and it was it was the slowest dismount I've ever had in my entire life it was very very slow it was all in slow motion and I was looking down at the ground and I was seeing this big two foot round rock and it was right right underneath of me and I was like, oh boy. And I said one word, I said Jesus. And I fell head first on the ground and right beside me by my ear was, was this big two foot boulder. And I didn't, I didn't hit the boulder. Um, and I wasn't scratched at all, but we ended up getting rid of the horse. I was like, okay, that's it, <laughs> she's down the road. But um, 
Yeah, I'm very grateful for my angel. Yes. One in the back. Uh, when I became a Christian, I, uh, I went to Heartland College down in Virginia. And I decided to go co-reportering for the summer with a gentleman who's, uh, he's a pastor now, Ray DiCarlo is his name. Uh, so he and I were out uh, co-reportering and, uh, w you know, with prayer, wanting to reach people with the gospel and uh, taking the books door to door. And we got to this one lady's house and she opened the door and as soon as we started talking, she said, I'm not interested, not interested at all. And so I, I started to back up. And she goes, oh, you're, you, you want to wipe that off? You want something to wipe that off with? And I looked at my shoulder, and, and there was a big batch of mud. I mean, it, it was like half the size of a baseball smash of mud on my shoulder, which wasn't there before, right? And I said, uh, sure. She said, well, come on in. <laughs> and then we had a water, we, and we talked about the gospel. We were there for an hour and a half. But I, I, I told Ray, I said, you know, an angel took that mud and sm sm smacked it on my shoulder. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, one up here. <clears throat> Sometimes I'm, I'm uh, not so thankful for my uh, guardian angel until I understand the whole story. <laughs> now, I travel a lot for my work and always before I leave, Tom and I will sit down and pray for traveling mercies and so forth. And um, I was going, last October, I was um, going down to the cities, uh, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, to work. And um, it started snowing, and it really started snowing hard, and the roads got very slippery. And... Um, I was going down the road with, with traffic, there, were, there was a car in front of me, there was a car behind me, I'm not going any faster than anybody else, and boom, all of a sudden I'm in the ditch. Fifty feet into the ditch, mind you, I was going nowhere. And um, I wasn't real sure why, why, if we prayed for traveling mercies and I wasn't really doing anything wrong, why was I in the ditch? Um, less than 10 miles in front of me, there was a huge car pileup where lots of people were hurt and, and uh, was there two deaths? Anyway, um, I was saved from that. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I turned around to come home. I called my company said, I'm not going to make it. Um, I turned around to go home after I got towed out of the ditch and there was a big accident behind me also. Mm. I missed it because I think my guardian angel put me in the ditch and said, you need mm -hmm. to be here for a while. Yes. Okay. Any, back in the back. This is the Bowen family again. Front row and back row. Well, this happened at the farm many years ago. Teddy was about four years old. And uh, when I came in with the tractor uh, to the, for lunch, I, I parked the tractor, I left it idling, and, and uh, went in and, and ate lunch. And when I came out, I, I normally I walk around a piece of equipment and check it out before I get on and start today or start the next hours. And... Uh, I walked around, and Teddy evidently, he had gotten sleepy when I went in to eat, and he was bored or whatever. I don't know what was, he was thinking, but he went out to the tractor, and the duels that was the, on this tractor had duels, and the way they were designed, there was a, a cavity or inset in the tire where if anything got inside of there, it couldn't fall out. It had a, uh, a. It couldn't fall out. It just would stay in the. And anyhow, so I'm walking around there, and I, all of a sudden, I see Teddy. He's asleep inside of the duel. And the tractor's running. I would have normally just come out and got on the tractor and left. Mm -hmm. I I did. I just thank God that he, 
you know, that God sent somebody to watch that little boy and wait for his daddy to come and save him. Yes. We have another one over here. Oh, by the way, oh, yes. I beat his little butt, too. <laughs> <laughs> up can't save from the spanking. <laughs> <laughs> the lady's up here from Africa. I have several, but um, one that stands out for me is I, I had just immigrated from um, Africa to the U.S., and I came to school first, but I had left a six-month-old baby that I had got from um, out of wedlock. And when I came to school, then, you know, I wanted to repent and just go back to God fully with all this life that I was going through. And I took time in the morning to pray and just totally repent. It was ripping my head off. And my dorm leader, if I want to say that, was um, they were running a, a radio station that was south, southwestern in Keene, Texas, an Adventist university. Mm -hmm and they were running a Christian station. So I'm just kneeling by my bedside, I'm really crying to God and I'm saying, please take this scene away from me and all that I've done. And then it goes really quiet and in, I, had, I had the radio on in the room, but then something caught my attention and it was like a godly, manly voice saying, Oh, you are my child, I'm your heavenly father, and I will love you with an everlasting love. And it was just like a poem or a psalm being read with a very, you know, this nice manly voices that act like God. And I stopped praying and I listened and I listened until the end of it. And then peace came upon me like just washed as white as snow Amen. and I just said God thank you because I heard your voice speak to me and every word is you just spoke to me and I was speaking to you and I thank you and I stood up and you know continued with my day but then I made sure I looked for my my dorm rep and I asked were you at the station today She's like, yes, I was there from this time to this. And like, yeah, I was there. Did you play something that was like a poem or, you know, a godly something being spoken? She's like, no, we're just playing music at that time. Mm. I'm like, no, you, can you go back? And she's like, no, we don't have anything like that. I'm like, okay. So I really want to thank God for speaking mm. to me that day. Yes. One up here. Yes. Yeah, this thing happened a while back. I was cutting some, uh, trimming some trees, doing some firewood, and my family wasn't home at the time, and I was standing on a log that I thought was really nice and trimming a branch that was above my head. And <coughs> next thing I know, the branch that I was standing on broke, and I felt something brush against my nose. And I laid on the ground for, for a while thinking that this isn't going to be good. Um, my face is going to be destroyed because of the saw blade hit my face and God shut the blade off um, it didn't trip the break on the on the saw at all so it mm. could have still been running and normally yes. it would have been and so uh, I praise God he I, I lay there for a long time thinking and praising God for stopping the blade as it hit my nose all I had was just one little scratch on there wow. as I was laying there so praise God for that yes Got one back here. I, I have one. Oh, yes, go. Um, when I was in college, um, I was driving. I was late for class, or I was with my mom and dad, and I was on, on my way to class. And as I was driving in town, a car just smashes right into me. I was just going down the lane, and this person just smashes into me. And I was sitting there. This isn't a miracle as far as safety, I guess probably was, but it was more for comfort in this case. And I got out of the car. The gentleman who hit me came over to my car, spoke some other different language, and took off. I ran down the road. Um, and I was like, I'm sitting right in the middle of an intersection. What am I going to do? So I was really 
shaking and scared. And so I walked over to the side, and I'm like, I have no phone at that time, no cell phone, no nothing. And a gentleman pulls up in a black vehicle and just had the real calming voice, just came up and says, everything is going to be just fine. I'll call your parents. What's their phone number? And then he called the police, and the police showed up. And I was just visiting with him, and then the police officer came, and he asked me a question, and I turned to back to him, and he was gone. So I knew my angel was there, even though, you know, I didn't have any injuries or anything. That's right. Yeah, back here. I got a couple different ones, I guess. Um, I wasn't there with this one. That um, my family has been through a lot since I was a boy, and. Um, I lost my dad when I was 22, and my uh, my grandma had um, my four younger brothers that they was taking care of because my mom wasn't in any condition to take care of them. And of course, you got four younger boys, and the youngest was um, six, and the next one was eight and not knowing how to deal with your dad's death. And my brother Howard, who to this day doesn't want to acknowledge that there's a God, but um, he, going through this hard time, had gotten my grandma's 357 pistol and uh, got so mad at her that... Um, he points this gun at her, and she had told me that that gun had a hair trigger. I mean, you could just barely touch it, and it would go off. And my brother was squeezing that trigger for all it's worth, and it didn't go off, and he was four feet from my grandma. Mm. So there's no way he would have missed. I'd have to say that there was a guardian angel there for my grandma. Absolutely. One that hits home for me. Is the fact that my son he had a little puppy that he had lost. And his dog had filled the void because his mother had left him. And um Not knowing how to deal with that dog, he had um, made some choices with a gun of mine, and um, I have to say that for a dad, I'm glad that there was a guardian angel watching over him. Amen. Up here. I've kept my guardian angel very busy. <laughs> In 90 years, you have a few trials. And... Uh, First one I remember is it kept me from drowning <laughs> when I was a little boy. We learned to swim in the old muddy Red River. We lived right beside it, and uh, of course that's where my my brothers and I learned to dr swim and. Every warm day, that's where we were. But when I was trying to keep up with them, I got tired. And I knew I was going <laughs> to... It 
I was going to drown. But something told me, turn over on your back and float. So I did. Well, you, you can float, but you go under once in a while. You come up and get another breath of air and keep on floating downstream. Until you get rested and then you turn over and swim again to shore. And that's what I did. Hmm. Now, of course, there's so many times in life that the guardian angel has protected me. We lived three miles from the local schoolhouse. And we didn't have a pony then to ride. So my older brothers went out to North Dakota where they round up the wild horses and and they bought three of them. Well, one of them, of course, had never been ridden or broke at all. And that's the one you should ride to school, of course. <laughs> it was a nice horse, but she didn't know how to turn or anything. And if you were going down the road and the snowstorm had been there and it blew everything smooth, you couldn't tell, the horse wouldn't tell where the road was. And we'd keep going to the side and I knew there was a deep ditch there. Well, I would pull on the string and she would turn and look at you but not move over. Well, <laughs> She kept getting closer and closer to the ditch. And I knew that she was going to go full speed into the snow and the ditch. So I took my feet out of the stirrup saddle and prepared for the plunge. And sure enough, that's what happened. She went off of the road and into the ditch. It was full of snow and she made a somersault. Hmm. Well, I flew off the horse and uh, into the snow. I was buried in there, but the horse never hit me. Hmm. I didn't get hurt. But I knew if I didn't get up before the horse did, the horse would run home. So I crawled out of the snow, and I got out before the horse did. And the horse got up, shook itself, and got the snow off. <coughs> I crawled back on. Then she stayed in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and we made the last mile and a half in full speed. <laughs> well, there's too many more I won't tell. <laughs> We all have our stories of angels. And we're, we're so fortunate that sometimes we know. But I believe the majority of the time, we don't know. Jesus and your guardian angels are pointing you above your farms, your cattle, and your earthly treasure to the kingdom of heaven.
to an immortal inheritance and eternal substance in the kingdom of glory. You know, we think of Christ pointing us. We think of the Holy Spirit talking to us. But do we think of our angel pointing us? And our angel does. Our, our angel will guide us. And so which is it? When you get that, that notion to lean back, that notion to not go there, is it your angel or your Holy Spirit? I don't know. Just follow the notion. It's, you know, God has, he's got a, he's got a, what do you call it? He's, it's a safety plan. For when we don't, in, in firefighting, and when we do wildland fires, we talk about the safety zone. God's got safety there for us. I have seen in the tender love that God has for his people, and is very great. I saw angels over the saints with their wings spread about them. Do you ever think about that? When you're, you're in, in danger, you're, or, or just when you're going, your angel has their wings above you to protect you? That's amazing. Each saint has an attending angel. If the saints wept through, this, through uh, discouragement or were in danger, the angel that ever attended them would fly quickly upward to carry the tidings, and the angels in the city would cease to sing. Isn't that amazing? So when we're having a difficult time, our angel, at a split second, notifies heaven, comes back, and they themselves are concerned about us. Do we think about that? They would bear the tidings upward, and all the angels in the city would weep. And, when the, and then with loud voices say, Amen. But if the saints fixed their eyes upon the prize before them, and glorified God by praising Him, then the angels again would shoot quickly to heaven and notify them. The glad tidings to the city, and the angels in the city would touch their heart, their golden heart, and sing with a loud voice, "Hallelujah." Amen. Do you think about when you make choices that heaven is either crying or praising the angels based on your your angel, your guardian angel, communicating? When unconsciously we are in danger of exerting a wrong influence, the angel will be by our side, prompting us to a better course, choosing words for us. Have you ever wondered, you know, what shall I say? How do, you know, something come up, and you need to deal with the situation, and you just are trying to think the right word to say? Yes, the Holy Spirit can give us the words, but also it says our angels can give us those words. And influence in our actions. Thus, our influence may be a silent, unconscious, but a mighty power in drawing others to Christ in the heavenly world. I was in, where was I? I was in um, Sacramento. And uh, I was at a, a gymnasium. And we had over 500 Russians. There were Russian, uh, Romanians, and Ukrainians that came to, to the evangelistic series. Over 500 people came. We baptized, oh, well, I think it was 72. And before each evening, before the meetings, we would have cooking classes. It was kind of, you know, one of the meetings we were doing uh, one thing, and this one we were doing cooking classes. And they would come. Well, their Orthodox pastor noticed that a lot of his members were going to these meetings. And he thought, I need to go check these meetings out. I don't want to lose my members. He was the shepherd over his fold. So he came. He started coming to the, uh, to the evangelistic meetings. Well, he started coming to the cooking classes. It was the last cooking class, the very last one, the, the last night of the evangelistic series. And this, and this pastor stands up and tells everyone, and I mean, the room was full with many more people that are in here today, full of people at the cooking class. And this guy looks like a dock worker. He's about this tall, and he's like, big, strong guy. And he turns around to his people, and he says, you cannot be a vegetarian and be strong. 
And he turns around at me and he goes, arm wrestle me. Mm. This dude is huge. I'm not huge. And he's in the air. Not on the table, in the air. You know, my normal. But, no, that's okay. But I say, God, what do I do? And, the, and I was impressed to go. And so I walk up. And this guy's like, oh, you know. And I'm thinking, okay, he's just going to put his hand up against my hand. And then he's going to go, Whoa. But he didn't do that. He hit my hand like a train car. Without, you know, I mean, he didn't walk up and say, okay, let's arm wrestle. He came up and he goes, like that. And my arm was fine. And he's going, oh, trying to push my arm and he can't push it. And then my voice is like, push it over. And I went, well, I'm wrong. It was my angel went, like that. And he turns around. I mean, he's as amazed as I am. <laughs> and he looks around at everybody and he says, you can be a vegetarian if you're strong. <laughs> and he sat down. Amen. So our guardian angels don't just take care of us from the car wrecks and the jack and, and the other things. But they also give us words. They protect us. And, and when we're trying to influence people about Christ and the right things to do, if we will let them. Now, I could have said, no way. And even though it's, go ahead, no way. Do you ever do that? And I would, let, I would have missed a huge testimony to me. <laughs> and a huge testimony to him and everyone else. We need to listen. When you rise in the morning, do you feel your helplessness, your need of strength from God? And do you humbly, heartily make known your wants to your Heavenly Father? If so, angels mark your prayers. And if these prayers have not gone forth out of foreign lips, or, or, or feigned lips, I'm sorry, feigned lips, and that means some people just get up and they say, you know, God be with me today, keep me safe, amen. You know, they just have this ritual prayer. That's feigned lips. And if these prayers have not gone forth out of feigned lips, which is pretended lips, then you are in, uh, when you are in danger of unconscious doing wrong and exerting an influence which will lead others to do wrong, your guardian angel will be by your side, prompting you to a better course, choosing your words for you and influencing your actions. Okay, so our angels will do that. So we're to ask God what our needs are. And my question is, do we need to ask God more for our angels to help us more? Do we need to ask God more to listen to our angels? Yes, we ask God to help us to understand what He wants us to do. And God, please give me an ear to listen to my Holy Spirit. To the Holy Spirit that's talking to me. But do I need to also say, God, help me to pay attention to my angel. And thank you for my angel. Do we ever talk about our angel to God? I need to more <laughs> may the Lord open to your many matters that he has opened to me Satan is watching his opportunity to dishonor the cause of God I have been shown your pearl your peril and I have also been shown your guardian angel preserving you again and again from who no, yourself. Yes, from Satan. But also, it says, from yourself. Do we ever do stuff that's stupid? You know, I, I go into the school system and I talk to kids about lifestyle. And I'll ask these little kids. I'll say, what does alcohol do? 
And the little kids will say, it makes you make stupid decisions because they watch dad and mom make stupid decisions. And, and we can do stupid decisions without alcohol. And I have also been shown your guardian angel preserving you again and again from yourself, keeping you from making shipwreck of faith. My brother, lift up the standard, lift it up, and be not faint-hearted or discouraged. The heavenly bodies are worthy of contemplation. God has made them for the benefit of man. And as we study his works, angels of God will be by our sides to enlighten our minds and guard them from satanic deception. Yes, from Satan. And is Satan out there to deceive us? And is he even more today than ever in the 6,000 years? Yes, inspiration is telling, tells us that Satan has pulled the lever back to full steam ahead to deceive us, which cause time is short. Do I, ne do I ever have more than one? If I feel a human influence affecting my testimony, no matter where I might be, I had only one and had only one cry to God and an angel would be sent to my rescue. I already had one guardian angel attending me continually, but when necessary, the Lord would send another to strengthen and raise me above the power of every earthly influence. Do you ever feel like you need more than one? Our one angel can help us a lot, but we get in some tough situations. And all we have to do, does it say he would send 10,000 angels? Yes, it does. All we have to do is ask. And again, as we know as our children, we want them to ask for help. We want, them, we want to be wanted. We want to be needed. And God wants us to ask. He's not going to make any of us do anything that we don't want. And so if we ask, he's, he's, more, willing than, he's more than willing to give. What will it be like to meet our guardian angels? Every deemed one will understand the ministry of angels in his own life. The angel who was his guardian from his earliest moment. Where's the earliest moment? Conception. That's the earliest moment. The angel who is his guardian angel from his earliest moment, the angel who watched his steps and covered his head in the day of peril, the angel who was with him in the valley of the shadow of death, who marked his resting place, who was the first to greet him at the resurrection morning. What will it be to hold converse with him? Now, can you, can you imagine... You know, here you finally meet Henry and say, Henry, explain this situation that happened. Tell me about the time the jack happened. Tell me about the time of the, the tractor tire. Tell me about all these situations that we've been. Tell me about when I was walking across that, that power line. What'd you do? And, and Henry's going to tell us. And I think it's okay to name our angel. Do you think? I think it is. Give him a name. What will it be to hold converse with him and to learn the history of the divine interposition in the individual life of heavenly cooperation in every humanity? Interposition. Interposition means when something steps in between two to take action. That's actually a legal term that our states have, interposition. That's what the South chose at the, uh, when, when they fired on Sumter, was interposition, states' rights. Your state has the right in the, in the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment, to be able to say no to the federal government. That goes against our constitutional rights. And the state has, to be, has the ability to say no to the federal government for your benefit. Well, 
our angels, when something's about to happen between good, between bad and us, our angel steps in between bad and protects us from bad. That's interposition. In conclusion, we could keep talking. How will our guardian angels help us in the time of trouble? I saw the saints leaving the cities and villages and association and associating together in companies and living in the most solitary places. Angels provided them food and water while the wicked were suffering from hunger and thirst. Now this is the time of trouble. This is what we have in the time of trouble. I saw the angels leaving the cities and villages and associating together in companies. Hopefully we've left the cities. It's not a time to be living in the cities today. And living in most solitary places. That means nobody else is there. Nobody else. Angels providing them food and water. And while the wicked were suffering from hunger, and, and while the wicked were suffering from hunger and thirst. In the time of trouble, just before the coming of Christ, the righteous will be preserved through the uh, menstruation of heavenly angels. But there will be no security for the transgressors of God's, God's law. Now listen to this, y'all. Let me read this again. I have to read things a couple times to get it to set in. In the time of trouble, just before the coming of Christ, the righteous will be preserved through the ministration, the ministering of, of heavenly angels. But there will be no security for the transgressors of God's law. Angels cannot then protect those who are discarding one of the divine precepts. So how do we get to that point? We better start now. I mean, you just don't automatically, boom, become not doing anything wrong. You've got to, you've got to work at that. You talked about works this morning. And people don't like that word, works. Well, it, we're saved by grace. But we have a responsibility to do our part and, be, and, and to obey Angels cannot then protect those. This is at the time of trouble. Angels cannot protect those. Protect them from what? All chaos. A time is never before that you read last night. Uh, Daniel 12, 1. Angels cannot protect those who are discarding one of the divine precepts. The last paragraph. We need to understand better than we do the mission we, we need to understand better than we do the mission of angels. It would be well to remember that every true child of God has the cooperation of heavenly beings. Invisible armies of light and power attend the meek and lowly ones who believe and claim promises of God. Cherubim, seraphim, and angels that excel in strength stand at God's right hand. All ministering spirits, again angels are called spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That last sentence. All ministering spirits, all these ministering angels, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Again, it's conditional. So we have a responsibility. And no, we're not plumb perfect. But as we continue to improve and improve and improve through Christ's help, not in of ourselves, because if you think you're doing it yourself, you're going to fall and bust your nose. It's through Christ that we're able to do it. But I encourage us, as we look at these times to come, yes, we think of Christ. Yes, we think of God. And yes, we think of the Holy Spirit. But don't forget, you got an angel with you 24-7 if you're doing what God wants you to do. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're, 
We're living in a tough time. And it's so easy to stray and get caught up in the world. Caught up in the craziness out there. Lord, bring us back into the fold. Lord, help us to listen to our angels. To listen to your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for giving us angels to protect us, to put their wings over us, to, to shelter us from destruction that Satan would have. Give us a hunger. Give us a desire to go to heaven. Give us a hunger. Give us a desire to obey. And Lord, give us the, the strength to obey. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.